Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a different badass person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give no shit attitude and come on on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. You don't have to be a muscled up Celt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Most of these badasses are all too real. While some may be only legend, badass legends though. The only prerequisite for this title is Celtic blood and badassedness. This week's Celtic badass is John L. Sullivan. Back in the days before ultimate fighting, ultimate frisbee, ultimate extreme face kicking, or any other sports that may or may not include the word ultimate in the title, the most testosterone laden mega ass kicking competition in available to humans was bare knuckle boxing. Now this badass fight club style face mashery is as old as time itself and back before everybody thought it would be cool to put the sport on skates and call it professional ice hockey. Hard asses around the planet sent their days ruthlessly dishing out knuckle sandwiches like pissed off chefs at the International House of Ass Kicking. Now, for as long as Homo sapiens have had opposable thumbs and therefore the ability to close their fingers into a fist, men have used the time honored tradition of face punching to appropriately determine who, in fact, truly is the most hardcore badass there. If we choose to go by that criteria alone, then John L. Sullivan is probably the manliest man in American history and the most hardcore badass to ever sucker punch a gorilla in the chops for no good reason and then go off to the bar and celebrate by pounding a fifth of Jameson's, breaking the bottle over someone's head, nailing some skank, corseted 1880s street prostitute, and, you know, probably passing out and waking up the next morning and doing it all over again. Now Sullivan was the last of the great bare knuckle boxers, the first gloved boxing world champion, and a man so badass he could have de uh, detonated those giant blocks at Stonehenge in the rock dust with a right hook and still have had enough energy left over to resurrect the druids, punch their heads off, and then go back to pounding whiskey until he passed out from being just too awesome. Now, born in Roxbury, Massachusetts, in 1858, Sullivan was the son of a ridiculously poor, first-generation Irish dirt farmer. Why you would want to farm dirt, I don't know, but you know, there you go. He bounced around a couple different crappy jobs early in his life, but his healthy disrespect for authority and uncontrollable Bruce Banner-like anger really hampered his professional career. Like, for instance, one time in a right factory work, uh, foreman kicked John L. in the ass for coming back late from his break. The 17-year-old Sullivan responded by punching his boss so hard he broke the guy's jaw and he flew backwards through a glass window. Now, when he was, uh, wasn't was beating down authority figures or farm animals, Sullivan was also pretty notorious for hitting up the Boston bars, getting trashed, and boasting what he could, you know, kick the ass of anyone in the room. Whenever people took him up, you know, on the offer and took a, an affront to his wild, egomaniac boasting. He took them out into the alley behind the pub, thrashed them senselessly, and threw their unconscious bodies into a dumpster. He was also a competitive cake tosser, meaning that he could throw a full keg of beer farther than pretty much anybody in Suffolk County, which is pretty sweet. Now eventually, Sully, which is his nickname, fell into a career as a boxer, not by choice, but more or less because beating the hell out of people was pretty much the only thing he was really uh, good at. Now, when he was 19, he went to see a boxing demonstration, and some jackass professional fighter got up on stage and offered to fist fight members of the audience to prove how much of a man he was. Sullivan, being the crazy, fight-hungry Irish hooligan that he was, obviously took this dumbass up on his offer. The jackass boxer sucker punched Sullivan in the face during the pre-fight handshake, so John L. responded by knocking the guy out of the ring with a huge uppercut, sending him face first into the orchestra pit, where he crashed through a baby grand piano. <laughs> now from that point onward, um, it was on for John L. Sullivan, known as the Boston Strong Boy. The 5'10", 196 pound Sully started traveling around, fighting anybody stupid enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. 
and beating the hell out of amateur and professional boxers across the Northeast. He quickly became the well-known for his uh, berserker hard-punching style. Once, he even KO'd a dude with two punches. Now, his endurance, his speed, and his innate ability to take a ludicrous amount of physical damage while still remaining upright made him a legend. Now, during the late 19th century, bare knuckle boxing was illegal in the United States, and therefore even more badass. But this also meant that a lot of fights had to take place in situations where cops couldn't bust them up and arrest the fighters for assault and battery. On one such occasion, Sullivan boxed a guy while riding on a barge in the middle of the Hudson River, beating down a dude known as the Bull's Head Terror. Now, in a fight that lasted over an hour, I find this pretty damn impressive, because with a nickname like the Bull's Head Terror, I'm picturing Sullivan fist fighting a freaking minotaur. Now, Sullivan also traveled the country on the rails, traversing the United States on three separate occasions, putting on demonstrations and exhibitions, challenging anybody and everybody to come on stage and fight him, and offering a prize to any challenger who could last four rounds in the ring with him. Now, on his three trips, only one man ever made it the full four rounds. Most of the others didn't last ten minutes. John L. was pretty much an ultra-mega superstar at this point, and had become legendary for his badassitude as a back-alley underground boxing champion. He won the American Bare Knuckle Championship in 1882, only needing about 10 minutes to bash in the face of the old champ, and won the world title in 1889, despite arriving at the flight, uh, fight after a long night of drinking, partying, and scoring with the chicks. Now, Sullivan showed up looking like he had gone 36 hours without sleep, which he probably did, and drank whiskey and tea in his corner between rounds. He barfed over the side of the ring in the middle of the 44th round, jeez, but kept it there, pushed it to the limit, and won the fight in the 75th round when the other dude was just basically too exhausted to even continue fighting. Eventually, they, uh, they thought maybe they could curb the limitless concussion uh, force of this rock hard fist by making him wear gloves. But John L. Sullivan wasn't going to be deterred by something as trivial as two ounces of foam. In fact, he preferred the hard leather of the gloves because they protected his knuckles from getting all cut up on his opponent's mutilated faces. The dude went out, put on his gloves, beat down a couple chumps, and took the gloved boxing title as well, making him not only the last of the great bare knuckle boxing champions, but the first real heavyweight gloved boxing world champion as well. The life of hard drinking and hard fighting eventually caught up with old John Sullivan. The Boston strong boy lost his first fight at age of 29, going down to the 21st round. I find this pretty, inf uh, pretty impressive because after this bout, Sullivan still did some promotional exhibition type stuff. But this was more or less the end of the professional fighting career. During his 14 years as a fighter, John L. Sullivan was the champion for seven years as a gloved fighter and seven years as a bare knuckle brawler. He retired as one of the world's most popular and wealthiest sports heroes, uh, helped bring glove boxing into prominence as a professional sport, and was actually really good friends with Teddy Roosevelt, which can only be considered bonus points, you know, how you know, if you know Teddy Roosevelt, no matter how you slice it, that makes you badass. Now his final official record as a fighter was 38 and 1, 38 wins, 1 loss, with 33 knockouts. But that number doesn't really take into account the many unofficial off-the-book fights, the majority of which resulted in his enemy having to find an amateur doctor to help wire their jaws shut or extract their faces from their abdominal cavities. Now, John L. Sullivan was a true badass of the pugilist. Now, that's just a big word for fighter. And feared by anyone who faced him in a fight. Dude, that's badass.